after that, you went on to be named three-time announcer of the year. Yeah, I did. You know, in the uh, in the early part of that program, it began in '81, and um, or '82. I'll take that back. And Bob Tallman won it the first year. I won it the second. Randy the third. Anyway, the third time I won it was in um, 1890. Or 18. <laughs> uh, yeah, right. <laughs> That's close. Before the invented silver, you know. Um, it was in '89, and I thought that was over. Mm -hmm. Then I had it three times, great deal. In 2002, they gave it to me again. That was the fourth time. And that, that was the biggest shock of my life. One of the greatest rewards, too. I was there when you did your speech. Yeah, you was. That was great. <laughs> that was great. Everyone in the audience was in tears, including me. We did not expect it to happen. We really didn't. It was great. And when was it that ESPN approached you to start announcing all the television coverage for the road? Well, in, uh, in 1989, uh, uh, director by the name of Zoe Vajda and John Baumgartner who worked for the Heston mm -hmm. company and mm -hmm. they were the sponsor of the NFR. They approached me and got interested in me and about that time the Blair Network signed a contract for a couple of years with mm -hmm. Pro Rodeo. So I started doing uh, what we're doing now, mm -hmm. interviews behind the shoots. <laughs> That's where I learned to dig those little mounds with my toes when I Standing there before the camera rolls, and I've got a bulldogger that's six eight, you know, <laughs> and we're looking like this. I got where I could kick that dirt up. I could be six inches taller by the time that camera rolls. So I started the doing the tricks of the trade yeah, to find true. out. <laughs> <laughs> and then I anchored the, um, I anchored the television for about ten years mm -hmm. uh, at the uh, NFR. So I played all sides of it. I hosted it on the sideline. I've done interviews. I've um, and you met the president. Oh, did I? Oh, you got to tell this story because this is that, a great you story. You know, no, that was wild. <laughs> I was at uh, a rodeo in Albuquerque, and they called me like three days ahead of time to come sing this closing song for the presidential rodeo. Well, in all the flying back there and the hub of the rehearsal and the and the security was unreal. I mean, I can only as you imagine. can imagine. <laughs> But at, at, at the close of the song, I am to call the president down out of his box, and mm -hmm. he's going to come to the microphone. All the contestants by then would have been in the arena, and he's going to address them. So we go through all the maze of this, and I'm standing over by the gate in the dark after the little G-man has gone through my guitar case <laughs> and my <laughs> pockets and everything else. You know, <laughs> And I know he's only about nine feet from me the whole time we're out there in that spotlight. And then it dawned on me, before I walked in there, I'm going to meet the president. I'm going to introduce him to the microphone. He'll probably shake my hand. <laughs> you know what I said? Oh, what were the words of that song? <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, yeah, that was a big thrill. And that was President Reagan? Yes, it was. He was a big guy, too, wasn't he? Yeah, he was. I didn't have time to build that little mound <laughs> I was talking about. <laughs>